Welcome back everyone for part three of lecture five. This is the last part. And so here we're going to wrap up approaching these unit, these reaction material balances. And we're gonna talk about the other two ways that we can try and solve these material balances when we have reactions. So in this, in this part, we're gonna talk about an atomic material balance and an extent of reaction material balance. And again, we're gonna just continue building off of that example that I was working with in parts one and two. So in this part, again, we've got our methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide entering our system. We've got methane being combusted and then exiting our system. We've got methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water exiting. And again, we have a fractional conversion of 90% and we're operating a steady state. And we're trying to figure out what the molar flow rate of stream two is, as well as the composition of stream two. Now, to get us going, the one thing that we're gonna to need to do for this atomic balance is just figure out how much methane is coming out based on our fractional conversion. And so for our methane, we've got input equals output plus consumption. We know the amount that we have coming in. We know how much is consumed thanks to our fractional conversion. And we figured out that the amount, the molar flow rate of methane exiting the system is two moles per hour. All right, and now that we know the methane flow rate, we can uh, start our atomic balance. And when it's performing an atomic balance, we're going to focus just on each atomic species. So for our system, we're, we're focusing on carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and that's it. So we're gonna start with a carbon balance, and we're gonna use our general material balance equation again. And as always, we're at steady state, so we have no accumulation. And because we're now doing an atomic balance and not a molecular balance, we actually also do not have generation nor consumption because we're not generating or consuming atoms. So our material balance got pretty easy. It's input equals output. Oh, that's neat. Okay. But now what we're gonna have to do is identify where all the carbon is that's coming in and coming out. So what I, our next step is, is just to identify the molecular species that have carbon in them and identify if they're coming in or they're coming out or both. So for us, what I did was I put brackets around each of the molecular species that's coming in and also coming out. So I've got methane and carbon dioxide entering my system, and I also have some methane and carbon dioxide exiting my system. So we're now gonna figure out how many moles per methane or carbon dioxide molecule we have of carbon and convert all of our molecular or our species into moles of carbon. So for us, we would start with the methane coming in. So we take our molar flow rate of methane in stream one and we'll multiply it. We know that for every mole of methane, we've got one mole of carbon. So we're gonna use a little pseudo conversion factor to convert our methane into moles of carbon. Again, we're gonna do that for our carbon dioxide in stream one. We have a molar flow rate of carbon dioxide entering the system. We know we have one mole of carbon per mole of carbon dioxide. And again, we're gonna say that's now equal to the mole, it's equal to the methane carbon coming out in stream two, as well as the carbon dioxide carbon coming out in stream two. So again, you're gonna set, set everything up using those molar flow rates of your particular species, using those conversion factors, figuring out how much carbon per your mo molecule of interest are. And then from there, we're gonna figure out how, many, how much carbon we have and use that information to solve for our unknown flow rate. So in this case, we substitute in our known values on our left-hand side for our inlets. We're gonna convert everything with regards to the methane and the carbon dioxide coming in. We say that's also equal to the carbon in the methane and CO2 coming out of our system. And now, if we simplify this all by doing our calculations, we'll see we have 20 moles of carbon and 20 moles of carbon for the methane and carbon dioxide entering the system. We've got two moles of carbon from the methane, and we have an unknown amount of carbon from the carbon dioxide. So if we rearrange everything and solve for N2CO2, we're gonna find out that we have 30, there's 38 moles per hour of carbon dioxide in stream two. Okay, and now we can move forward and we can do a hydrogen balance. So with our hydrogen balance, we're gonna have another simplified general material balance of input equals output. And again, we're gonna identify where all the hydrogen, 
hydrogen is in our system. So we've got hydrogen in our methane coming in, and then we have hydrogen in our methane and water coming out in stream two. And again, we're gonna just convert all of our molecular species into, in, into hydrogen atoms. So again, we have 20 moles of methane coming into our system. We know there's four moles of hydrogen per mole of methane, and we're gonna use that conversion to get into moles of hydrogen. And then we're gonna do the same thing for our output stream. Okay, and convert the methane coming out into moles of hydrogen, and the same deal with our water. Convert how much water we have into moles of hydrogen. All right, and if we now perform the calculations that we have available to us, we will see that we have, there's 72 moles of hydrogen that should equal the amount of hydrogen present in water in stream two. So now if we solve for our N2 H2O, we're gonna see that there's 36 moles per hour of water exiting our system, which is the same thing that we got when we did our molecular species calculations. And finally, we're gonna jump over to oxygen and do an oxygen balance. And as, as you guessed it, input is gonna equal output once again. We're now going to again identify the species that have oxygen in them that are coming in as well as coming out. So for us, we got a few more this time around. We've got oxygen and carbon dioxide coming into the system, and we've got oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water coming out of our system. And once again, we're gonna convert all our molecular species into moles of oxygen atoms. So once again, we have an, uh, we're gonna take our moles of oxygen in stream one, multiply by our conversion factor. We have two moles of oxygen atoms per one mole of oxygen molecules, that O2. And we, we're gonna add that to the amount of oxygen present in carbon dioxide that's entering our system, okay? And that's gonna equal the amount of oxygen in stream two, plus the amount of oxygen in carbon dioxide in stream two, plus the oxygen in water in stream two. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute in, we're gonna continue that oxygen balance, substitute in all our known values for the left-hand side, and for the right-hand side. And as you might have guessed, we're now trying to just solve for the amount of oxygen left over and is in stream two. So as we simplify and converge all those calculated values, we have 160 moles of oxygen on our input side. We've got an unknown amount of oxygen in stream two, plus 112 moles of oxygen contributed from carbon dioxide and water. And so now if we just rearrange everything, we will see that we have 24 moles per hour of oxygen exiting in stream two. And now if we put it all together and go back to our original diagram, we have now used our atomic balance to solve for all our, uh, all our unknown values in stream two. And as you notice, it does take a little bit of time to figure out where all the, where, where all your atoms are in the system and which molecules contribute to each of those different components. You also need to convert everything. You need to convert all your molecular species into moles of a particular atom. So just be aware that it can take up a little bit of time if you uh, take the atomic, atomic balance approach, but it generally is going to guarantee you to get the final answer. And the final, the final option that we have is an extent of reaction. And so in this case, with our extent of reaction balance, we're going to primarily just focus on this reaction itself. And similar to what we were doing with our limiting, limiting, determining the limiting reactant, we're going to try and figure out all our, all the value, all the final values in stream two with, in a similar process. So let's keep going. We've got methane plus oxygen, yields carbon dioxide plus water. We have every, our, our equation is correct. The stoichiometry is on point. So now we, we have our starting amounts at time t equals zero with 20 moles of methane, 60 moles of oxygen, 20 moles of carbon dioxide, and no water in the inlet stream. And now at time t equals t, we're gonna try and figure out what the composition of stream two is. And for this, we're again going to use uh, our Extent of reaction, we're gonna use Z as that variable. And so for us, we've set up our, at time T equals T, we've 
looked into how much we're using up. And in this case, we're going to define Z as the amount of methane being consumed. And so if we use up one mole of methane, we know we're also using up two moles of oxygen, which is why oxygen has that minus two Z term. And then when you go to carbon dioxide, you have a plus Z and with water, you have two Z. And so as I said before, we're going to, and we're going to focus on that Z and now we can solve for, we're going to solve for Z in this extended reaction equation. And as I said before, we've defined that as the amount of methane being consumed. We know based on our fractional conversion, how much methane is going to be used up. It's equal to 0.9. Okay. And in this case, we also know our fractional conversion, if we use variables, is the moles of methane consumed divided by the initial moles of methane. All right. And so for us, we've discussed that the, the amount of methane consumed is that Z term. We defined, it, we defined it as that. So for us, we can substitute in for the numerator Z and divide it by N naught. And now we can rearrange everything. So we have N naught times fractional conversion of CH4 equals Z. And now if we substitute in our values for N naught and our fractional conversion, we get 20 times 0.9, giving me 18 moles of methane being consumed, which we did see when we did our molecular balance. So we've now figured out what Z is. And, for, and now what we can do is use that information to solve for all those final values. We can substitute into each of the extended reaction equations for our different species and solve for what the final composition should be at time t equals t, which in this case is just when we exit our reactor. So again, we're going to substitute for Z. So for our methane, we're going to do 20 minus 18, and that's going to give me two moles per hour. When we do it for oxygen, we have 60 minus 2 times 18, 2 times our Z, giving me 24 moles per hour. Then with water, we're again going to have 2 times 18 equals 36 moles per hour. And for carbon dioxide, it's 20 plus 2 times 18 plus our 2, 2z. Ah, oh, nuts. Sorry, that's really supposed to be 1z, not 2z. And that's why it's supposed to be 38 moles per hour. And now you can see that we got all our final values. and as you might have noticed, that was a very quick process in order to solve for all of our final moles. And normally what I'll probably recommend is that you'll want to use either the molecular balance or the extended reaction balance, mainly on, for the fact that they're generally a lot quicker to solve for all your final mo uh, moles. But I wanted to present all three options just so you have more choices. And now we get to wrap up lecture five. And to recap, we talked about the last two forms of doing material balances for our reaction, which are atomic material balances and extended reaction material balances. Thanks a lot for tuning in and stay tuned for more.